Our first guest is an Oscar-nominated Emmy Award-winning actor, playwright, and director. His latest movie, Sing Sing, is in theaters now. Please welcome Coleman Domingo. <laughs> You know, I knew, I, this, I knew you were going to be here, so uh, this morning I spent about an hour thinking, what is he going to wear? You're kidding me. What is he going to wear? What, do, what am I going to wear <laughs> because of what he's going to wear? You are so fabulous. Thank you. These clothes. Uh, Where did you get your sense of style? Well, first of all, I got to thank my stylist, Wayman and Micah. They, they dressed me, and they've been really championing me for this whole season that I've been on with all yeah. these clothes. Now, I get yeah. my style, I think, from people in Philadelphia. I come from West Philly. I'm always... You mean Philadelphia? Philadelphia. Yes. 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 And, you know we, know, we know how to dress. You yeah. know, I, I grew up with men who wore pinky rings, and literally, I'm wearing a pinky yeah. ring. Yeah, yes. Yes, you, you are. Know, just like, you know, men who, like, kept their nails clean and long and, yeah. and like, love to wear, like, high-waisted suits. And uh -huh. I feel like I dress like... Teddy Pendergrass, Ooh, and, you know, yeah. the Isley Brothers and the stylistic. The people. Sound of Philadelphia. I dress like the Sound of Philadelphia. Yeah, That's yeah. exactly. Now, here's a picture of you. Um, Vogue magazine <gasps> asked you to come and, and be fabulous in a fashion show. <laughs> wow. Now, now, who, who are you wearing here? I'm wearing Balmain. 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 <laughs> yes. Gorgeous. Isn't it beautiful? Yeah. Now, you know, it seems like in the past three or four years, you are everywhere. Mm. When, when did that shift happen? Because you've been around for a long time. When did that shift happen? I've been around for a long time. <laughs> and, and I think this shift started to happen around doing shows like Euphoria. Yeah. And then, like, you know... Yes! Thank you. Yes! Well, actually, listen, listen I'm, a journey, I'm a journeyman actor, and I've been working in the theater for a long time, and then I kept popping up in things like Selma or If Bill mm -hmm. Street Can Talk. And, you know, the smaller roles but I guess very, you know, significant in a way. So I feel like my career is just really, I feel like I'm just starting another career. Yes. In another way. Because I feel like now I'm more of a leading man and doing other roles where people are like, I'm sort of the center of these productions. But it's been a long time coming. You know, I started out, my first job was in the circus. You know? What? Yeah. I was Doing yeah. what? I was... <laughs> <laughs> I was an aerial web artist, you know, that long rope that you would climb up and yeah. sit around yes. and do that. I was, um, I did juggling, I did tumbling. I was in this really kind of hippy-dippy circus in San Francisco called Make a Circus. Yeah. It was a children's political circus in right. San Francisco. So what I'm hearing is that you're willing to do whatever the client asks you to do. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Whatever needs to get done. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know... <laughs> Uh, that is, Guillermo, it, back me up on this. That is what Hollywood is all about. Am I right? That's right, yes. You do uh -huh. what needs to be done. Exactly. You got to do it. Yeah, you have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> no matter what, yeah. No, and ma Coleman, he said no matter what. No matter what. Okay. <laughs> and Coleman, so what have you not done that you are itching to do in this business? What have I not done? I think I'm ready to do more like romantic comedies. Mm -hmm. I think something. Right? You know. You know, have some fun, be on the run, be in love, do something yeah. like that. Because usually yeah. I'm in a lot of, like, heavy lifting, yes. you know, dramas, yeah. you know? And I'm about to go do a comedy, actually, with uh, Tina Fey and Steve Carell called The Four Seasons. Yeah. Oh, yes. So. The Four Seasons, which is a remake of a, a film from about 40, 50 years ago. I the Four love Seasons. that film. I mean, I remember I that film, like, like, when it came out. Maybe I was, like, I don't know, I was a kid yeah. watching it. But yeah. Maybe I shouldn't have been watching it, but... It was Carol Burnett and Alan Alda. Yes, and um, what's his name? Uh, uh, he's got big nipples. Um, Who? <laughs> Alan Alda? No, not Alan Alda. I'll think of it. <laughs> Lou, Lou Carew, Carew. Lou. How do you know he has big nipples? Because I've seen that movie, and I, I, I like big nipples. And it, <laughs> and, it just, and it just stayed with you. Yeah, stay with me. Does everybody love big nipples? So, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I don't I know. I wonder if there'll be some big nipples in the Four Seasons yeah. remake. Are you going to be showing nipples Maybe in I'll this? Maybe I'll show some big nipples. <laughs> Mine aren't actually that big. Mine are like little, like, chocolate chips. Yeah, OK. Well, you know, you can put lipstick on them and make them bigger. Like, like porn style. Yeah, or oh, maybe they have uh, nipple prosthetics. That, <laughs> that you could but, put on. I guess so, but then that's sort of like black exploitation. I guess it would be. You know, like yeah, but I would I would enjoy it. <laughs> I would 
enjoy it. Yeah. Now, have you ever done drag? I have done drag. I did, I, you know, I was on the show, I was on the show called The Big Gay Sketch Show, where I did, I played Beyonce, I played uh, Oprah, I played- Obviously. I, obviously. <laughs> I played Fantasia, and I played RuPaul. What? <laughs> exactly, exactly. What? <laughs> yeah. How do you prepare to play RuPaul? Well, you know, that's a very difficult role to play. Uh-huh. So, you know, I just had to, you know, honestly, I just played it, you know, like, you know, the time has come <laughs> to lip sync for your life. <laughs> just, no, 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 this is the real. This is the real. No, but I was, no, no, it was the, in the very beginnings of that show. Yeah. And I love the fact that we, we just like did everything a little over the top. The lighting was just like way extreme and beautiful. <laughs> and <laughs> it was like a blast. You could barely see my face. That's oh my how much light they were God. Yeah, right. Because you know, we didn't know what kind of lighting you were using or what kind of, you know, lenses that you were. Oh no, I tell you what, Liz, we were using a Navajo blanket <laughs> in the beginning of our show. Because you can barely see me because it's so much Vaseline on the lid. But you it was know. Beautiful though. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. And okay, so you're doing, you want to do a romantic com you're gonna do a romantic comedy. Yeah, yeah. You're doing you I, you're in so many movies right now. Uh it, it, uh, Broadway. You know, I first heard of you through a mutual friend of Ari Gold. Yeah. Which is, um, which we, he's not no longer with us, but just a lovely, lovely soul. This guy, Ari Gold was like the light of New York City. Yeah. And we all sort of like went around that light. And we all sort of knew of each other through Ari. Mm -hmm. And then our friend Ari, he unfortunately passed away a few years ago, but he always wanted us to get to know each other. Yeah. And he was always trying to connect people. He said, like, oh, you should get to know Rue, you'll love Rue. Yeah. And then I feel like though, it feels like that divine nature of, of the universe, Rue and I have, become friends yes. after Ari's passing. That's right. And, you know, I, I think of him all the time. Mm. I think of his, his energy is still there, you know? I think he's with us right now. He is with he us will. right now. That's right. That's right. <laughs> now, I want to talk about Sing Sing. Sing Sing is, is your new movie. Yeah. Uh, we're we're going to show a clip later. I saw a little bit of it. Your, your, your inner dialogue as an actor is so rich. When did you realize you could do that kind of work? I think, you know, I think early on in my career, the way I've even started my career was very much like feeling it out. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have a lot of training when I started, but I had a lot of feeling and I could be very raw. And then I had training came later. I, I knew how to dial that in and calibrate a performance. And so I started to understand that I was, I was very, I was a shy kid and I watched people all the time. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that that's exactly what I needed to do the work. Mm -hmm. I know how to, I watch human beings all day long and I still do the same thing. And I download aspects of them and their soul to be able to portray it and to portray it in a way that to respect them and love them, but let them be like villainous and loving and ugly and human all at the same and time. And you're not deterred by the restraining orders? Never. <laughs> no. no. No, not deterred by the restraining orders. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, not at all. It's funny because I, like, I feel like my job is to, give humanity to every single character, which is why I can play a pimp and I could play like, you know, Mr. in the Color Purple or I could mm -hmm. do like Buy It Rustin. Because mm -hmm. I feel like, but it's just the same essence. I want to make sure that they're humanized yeah. in some way, shape or form. And I'm looking at them through my lens, the lens uh, on their interior life and not the lens that everyone else is looking at them. Do you, do you watch yourself on, on camera? Can you watch yourself? I can, but I watch myself more technically more for like the set and where the cameras are going and the lighting so I can fit into the picture. But I don't watch it for performance. I feel like I've divorced myself from that. I'm like, no, I just have to trust being in the moment and trust that my editor and the director is gonna find the right way to calibrate the film. Do you feel sometimes, I just gave too much. I just gave way too much of myself. <laughs> I think we all feel that way once in a while. <laughs> In certain situations, yeah. but, you know, I did too much. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, because I'm just, I'm just amazed by your talent. You know, when, you. when we come back, we're going to have a little clip from uh, Sing Sing. I want everybody to see this because it's a fabulous movie. Thank you. All right, we'll be right back after this. It's, uh, it's been a program that was established to help uh, the population with management skills, and it's turned into something a, a bit more, uh, I don't know, um, wonderful because it helps. Uh, People get more in touch with their feelings and able to process and actually move through and um, truly get some rehabilitation. So are you acting at all during this interview?
Absolutely not. Oh my goodness. Welcome back, I'm here with Coleman Domingo. That's what I'm talking about right there. Thanks. That's what I'm talking about right there. I, I can feel you, I can feel that. Does it embarrass you to, to show that? No, but I, but I feel like you've got to, I've always learned you've got to give a little bit of your soul in mm -hmm. your work. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that film in particular, I wanted to give even more than my soul, because it was about humanizing these men who are incarcerated and they're doing the work through this rehabilitation through the arts program to heal themselves. Mm -hmm. and not only heal themselves and heal some of the wounds and, or some of the things that have got them into these circumstances, mm -hmm. but also to really do the deep dive of the work to find out the path that got them there and what they can do to like heal their soul, yeah. truly. Yeah. And so it's a very healing movie. It's also funny and you're, you're watching these men discover tenderness for each other and for themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's kind of revolutionary, especially as black and brown men. Yeah, uh, the movie is called Sing Sing. Is it filmed, uh, is it about Sing Sing Prison? Yeah, it's, yeah. About, it's about a program at, at Sing Sing Prison called Rehabilitation to the Arts. And it's a program that has worked so successfully. You know, these men go into this program to like put on plays. And, and with putting on plays, if anybody who's been in the high school, you know, theater, you know that it gives you different tools about building community and being in touch with their feelings. So much so that this, this program has had a less than 3% recidivism rate amongst the inmates who've gone through this program. Compared Help to me 60... understand what recidivism uh, is. Sure. sure. I don't know sure. what that is. Sure. Recidivism is you don't go back into prison. Ah, uh, okay. Once you're out, you're out. Mm -hmm. Instead of 60% nationwide, that's the usual average of uh, people who, get, um, uh, who come out of prison. Okay. So it's less than 3%. All right, and where did you film this thing? We filmed this in upstate New York at a decommissioned prison called Downstate, where many of our castmates, most of my castmates, at least 90% of them, actually went through this program. You're so, kidding me. Yeah. So, uh, so it's only three professional actors, besides myself, and um, the rest of my cast are all formerly incarcerated men. Wow. Now, uh, uh, have you ever been arrested? I've never been arrested. Have you? I have never been, I've come very close. <laughs> I've come very close. I, I'm not gonna tell the story because I'm gonna tell myself, but you know, I used to party a lot. Right. And what you're thinking, think but do. more. But more. Yes, okay, okay. yeah. <laughs> but I come very, very close. I think I have angels who, who, who saved me from, but, but you've, you've never been arrested or never, anything like that. Never been arrested, no. Never yeah. even been. Would you I, like to be? You, know, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. With, with the, the horror stories that I hear about, like, oh. person, absolutely not. No. No, no, I'm always, trying to be on the right side. Yeah. Now, so, and did you talk to some of the, the uh, formerly uh, inmated uh, actors yeah. about their experiences? Absolutely, but you know, even in our, in our process, I wanted to take them from where they were, like mm -hmm. where they were, because a lot of these men had been incarcerated for over 15 years, and they were now on the outside doing, doing the thing that one of my castmates, Clarence Macklin, who you will see in the movie, who's extraordinary, mm -hmm. he says, you know, it's, it, so, so we can go back out into the world and heal these communities that we may have caused harm to in many ways. Oh, so, wow, you know what wow. I mean? So it's like, so it really is like, how do we rehabilitate? It's not only rehabilitating yourself, mm -hmm. but you're rehabilitating a community as well. You know, years ago, there was a movie uh, directed by the governor of, of California's wife, Jennifer Newsom, mm -hmm. about, it's called The Mask We Live In, and it's about how young boys in our culture are told to shut their emotions off yeah. at around 12, 13 years old. How are you able to sidestep, because your emotions are right there, how are you able to sidestep uh, that, that restriction? Me? Yeah. Personally? Mm -hmm. Okay, first of all, now you're gonna get me all emotional. I think I grew up, I was told that I was loved every single day. It's true. I was told that I was special. I was told that I had a voice. These are things that I know a lot of these men were not told. I, and, I, and I grew up in inner city West Philadelphia, but I was like, and I was, I was shy and I was, you know, you know, soft. And, but that didn't, that didn't frighten my family. They were like, they just wanted to protect me more. The beautiful thing is they wanted to protect that softness. Mm -hmm. I think they knew that we needed that softness in the world. Mm -hmm. And even when I think about it now, really, that's really beautiful. That's a beautiful thing because it's, it's actually revolutionary, you know, especially for us as black and brown men to be, to have feeling and to know that it's part of our helping us with our mental health these days to say that we, we must acknowledge all of these feelings and for you to see us completely human and for us to like deconstruct and smash those tropes of toxic masculinity that has never worked for us. Mm -hmm. 
never worked for any of us. It doesn't help anyone, anyone in society. So the more that we can, the thing that I feel very um, strongly about is that we show true moments of tenderness between these very masculine men. Mm -hmm. Of, of, because that's what they did. Whether they told me explicitly that that was part of their process, they were holding each other accountable to be and um, to bring their feelings to the forefront, mm -hmm. to name their feelings, mm. to say, how do you feel? How does that make you feel? And in a, a very dangerous place to show feelings yeah. and tenderness, yeah. that they were ho holding that to be true. So this program is a program that truly works and it's beautiful and it's necessary. And I think if there's a line in our film that Paul Racy says, he says something like, who could imagine that the healing of the world could begin right here behind these bars in Sing Sing? Wow. And for me, that's, that's kind of um, extraordinary because saying, if we can do the work in a place like this to become more human, imagine what we can do out in the world. Yeah. Beautiful. That's really beautiful. I love that. That's, that's really what it's all about right there. That's really what it's all about. Hey, listen, we're going to all go see Sing Sing. Okay. And we're going to love it. And we're going to, because the revolution starts right here. Yes, it does. Right here. Thanks, Coleman. Sing Sing is in select theaters now and nationwide on Friday. Tonight, <laughs> after this.